Fry's syndrome is something that happens after a patient has parotid gland surgery. A lot of my patients ask me to explain to them what is Fry's syndrome. So we created this animation to try to take a relatively complex topic and simplify it and explain it. Anytime you remove a part or all of the parotid gland, it's called a parotidectomy. Now why do we do these parotidectomies? The most common reason is a person has a tumor. This is shown here by this yellow sort of glowing mass. Another very common reason that parotidectomies are performed are for parotid inflammation, usually chronic in nature. The parotid gland, the purpose of this gland is to produce saliva. And it's under the control of the brain via very special nerve fibers that are attached to the parotid gland. Here you can see the small blue vesicles moving that represent the saliva flowing from the gland through the duct into the mouth. So as the brain sends a signal down these special nerve fibers, it stimulates that gland to produce saliva. When a parotidectomy is performed, the gland is removed, but those nerve fibers remain under the skin, even though there is no gland there. Now these nerve fibers that were originally attached to the salivary gland now look for a new home and they look for the sweat glands of the skin. So now the new patient is saying, I'm thinking about eating and the idea of a burger or ice cream comes up. The brain says, great, make some saliva. It sends the signal down those nerve fibers, but now it stimulates the sweat glands instead of the salivary gland because these nerves have reattached themselves to a new type of gland, your sweat gland. The patient will feel warmth and maybe moisture as they're thinking or actually eating food. And this is actually what we call Fry syndrome. Now the degree to which a person feels this will vary from person to person. But that process of sweating on your face or having redness or warmth while thinking of food, that is called Fry's syndrome. The good thing is that with proper reconstruction, Fry's syndrome can absolutely be prevented at the time of surgery. So the take home message is this. If you have a prodidectomy, you will absolutely have some form of Fry syndrome. However, with reconstruction, Fry syndrome can be completely avoided. And even if you've had surgery done at another institution and you are suffering from Fry syndrome, it can still be secondarily corrected. So just reach out to us if you have any questions whatsoever about an explanation or how we could actually help you with Fry syndrome and we'll be happy to go over that with you.